Climate change now poses one of the principal threats to biological diversity on the planet. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, in its report released in April 2007, climate change will alter the structure and functioning of most ecosystems, will reduce biodiversity and therefore compromise the ecosystem services required by all life on Earth. Rising levels of greenhouse gases are already changing the climate. During the 20th century, global mean sea level has risen by 10 to 20 centimetres and the overall volume of glaciers in Switzerland decreased by two thirds. During the last three decades, Arctic ice thickness in late summer and early autumn decreased by about 40%. And since 1912, Mount Kilimanjaro lost 82%, while Mount Kenya lost 92% of its ice mass. Climate change is happening. Climate change is most likely the result of man-made activities, never in the history of mankind. We have destroyed biodiversity as we, as we are doing it. Every hour, three species disappear. Every day, between 100 to 150 species are disappearing. Every year, between 15 to 80,000 species are disappearing, and they are the result of uh, thousands of years of evolution. What will this mean for biodiversity and human beings? In the coming decades, the added heat stress and drier soils as a result of climate change may reduce yields by as much as a third in the tropics and subtropics, where crops are already near their maximum heat tolerance. Earlier breakup of Arctic sea ice gives polar bears less time to hunt. From 1980 to 2004, the average weight for female polar bears in western Hudson Bay, Canada, decreased by 143 pounds. Australia's Great Barrier Reef could lose up to 95% of its living coral by 2050 due to changes in ocean temperature and chemistry. Human beings will be affected in a variety of ways. More precipitation in temperate regions and Southeast Asia is likely to lead to more flooding. Less precipitation in Central Asia, the Mediterranean region, Africa, parts of Australia and New Zealand is likely to lead to more droughts. Changes in climate will allow an expanded range of some dangerous vector-borne diseases, such as malaria. The impacts of climate change on biodiversity are of major concern to the Convention on Biological Diversity. This is why the Convention has chosen biodiversity and climate change as the theme for the International Day for Biological Diversity for 2007. The Convention, the world's first global tool for sustainable development, was signed in 1992 at the Earth Summit in Rio, and today as 190 parties who have agreed to work together to conserve and sustainably use the biological diversity of our planet, while ensuring that the benefits from the use of genetic resources are shared equitably. Parties to the Convention are working to find ways to help biodiversity adapt to projected changes to the climate, and find ways that biodiversity can be a resource for communities who are adjusting to the effects of climate change. The Convention also coordinates its work with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change to help combat the causes and effects of climate change. There is a very urgent need to move on the question of adaptation to climate change now, <coughs> to move beyond the phase of assessment and to move into the, into the phase of actually doing something about adapting to the consequences of climate change. Islands are often characterised by a very rich biodiversity. Island species are vulnerable because populations tend to be small, localised and highly specialised and can easily be driven to extinction. Island ecosystems and their biodiversity are fragile. Isolated and small, where can these island species migrate to if temperature and rainfall changes? The main threats to island ecosystems from climate change are the rise in sea levels and the increase in water temperature that will affect organisms such as coral reefs. They provide a number of services to island populations and biodiversity and are highly sensitive to temperature changes. 
Polar ecosystems are home to an array of plants and animals that survive in some of the most extreme conditions in the world. Seas surrounding the Antarctic support a rich marine food chain. The biodiversity of the Arctic is fundamental to the livelihoods of indigenous people and local communities who have lived in the regions for years. Walruses, polar bears, seals and other marine mammals that rely on sea ice for resting, feeding and breeding are particularly threatened by climate change. The warming of the Arctic has repercussions in the rest of the world. Indeed, melting and highly reflective snow and ice uncovers darker land and ocean surfaces, increasing the absorption of the sun's heat and further warming the planet. Snow and ice melt also adds fresh water to the ocean, raising global sea level and possibly slowing ocean circulation, affecting global and regional climate. In southern Africa, there is evidence that the climate is already affecting the distribution and habitat of a range of species. Scientists from the South African National Biological Institute are studying quiver trees to find out more about how plants in this part of the world are coping with climate change. They've already found a marked shift in distribution. Trees at the hottest end of their range are dying, and those in the south are growing well. I remember clearly the moment that I, I looked at that graph that I drew and I saw that it was so clearly showed that there was this pattern and that the only explanation was climate change and it was just... Biodiversity is threatened by climate change but the resources and ecosystem services it provides can reduce the impacts of climate change on populations and livelihoods. For example, the Chaga home gardens in Tanzania. Trees are not felled, food is grown among them. Even better, food is grown vertically, ensuring sustainability. If one crop does badly, there are others to take its place. The advantage of this uh, home garden, it has got so many uses, because it gives food for, for the people, it also gives food for the animals, and also it gives the cash crop, and we have got shade trees. It shed the coffee and it shed the banana. And uh, these trees, roots fix nitrogen. Many elements of coastal ecosystems are important for protection against extreme weather and other events. For example, mangrove forests and coral act as natural breakwaters for the action of waves, as well as providing habitats for marine animals and reef fish, and generating revenues from tourism. Conservation of biodiversity in coastal ecosystems is a practical way to build resilience to climate change. So yes, biodiversity can assist and biodiversity should contribute because healthy ecosystems are important for the health of human beings but it's also important for the health of the atmosphere. There are ways to help biodiversity adapt to climate change by maintaining and restoring native ecosystems managing habitats for endangered species, creating refuges and buffer zones, establishing corridors that take into account projected changes in climate, and introducing plant varieties able to adapt to climate change. In ecosystems around the world, reducing the threats to biodiversity will help maintain diverse and resilient ecosystems, which can then cope with climate change. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has indicated that biodiversity conservation in forest ecosystems reduces their vulnerability to negative impacts of climate change, such as destruction due to drought, fire and disease. Avoiding deforestation in mountains and forest ecosystems will ensure that these exist as storehouses of carbon. Creating marine protected areas will also help protect a number of marine species, including those corals which are resilient to bleaching. Preventing the degradation of wetlands or restoring them will also protect biodiversity. The parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity noted at their last meeting that the Secretariat should work with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change the Convention to Combat Desertification and other organisations and agreements to deal with the challenge of climate change.
With the framework convention on climate change, the convention on biological diversity has provided guidance so that afforestation projects under the clean development mechanism take biodiversity into account. The Convention on Biological Diversity is also working with other biodiversity-related conventions, such as the Convention on Migratory Species, the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands, the World Heritage Convention, to come up with strategies on the impact of climate change on biodiversity. Working together to save biodiversity, we will have the resources we need to deal with and adapt to climate change.